lots of questions, concerns, and excitement about the Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. And I've been testing all of them and I have some answers. So if you have particular questions, definitely put them in the comments below. And I have some thoughts on this lineup as well. The Ryzen 9s, the 9950X and the 9900X, these are definitely not gaming CPUs that can game perfectly fine, don't get me wrong, but you're gonna want these if you're more into production workloads, doing a lot of Blender, a lot of multi-core operations. Cinebench R23 is an excellent representation of what those are actually like. These, like the 9950X, is hitting about 42,000 points in Cinebench R23. You can run that as a free benchmark download, so go check it out and let me know what your score is and what CPU you have. The Ryzen 7 9700X and the Ryzen 5 9600X are actually very interesting to me because of their kind of efficiency and capabilities. Now, I play Star Citizen in 4K. The Ryzen 5 9600X plays it in 4K perfectly fine buttery smooth. I can't tell the difference between running this and a true gaming CPU in 4K. That's kind of the nature of playing in 4K, so you don't need a high-end CPU, but something that is fast and capable will do it just fine. That's what this is. And the 9700X, this is something where if you're more of a maybe content creator doing some streaming, kind of multitasking while gaming, this is extremely capable and this is actually kind of nice for photo editing and of course some video editing as well. They are both capable CPUs and I'm looking forward to the price actually going down where these are truly easy recommendations. Now, if you're on an Intel platform or AMD's older AM4 platform, you're gonna have a bit of a leap in order to get on the AM5 platform because you'll need a new AM5 compatible motherboard. You'll need DDR5 RAM most likely. So there's a bit of a, a cost involved to get on this platform. And you know, that's something that you'll have to decide if it's worth it based on how you use your PC and the capabilities of these CPUs. Intel did recently release their microcode update for the 13th and 14th gen CPU issues. Only time will tell as if it actually fixes the issue, we don't know. So it's still kind of hard for me to thoroughly recommend the Core i9-14900K, for example. I love this CPU. It's really not, well, it's cool, but it runs hot, yes. But this, the 9950X, blows it away in certain tasks, like Blender, while this blows away the 9950X in certain tasks, like, you know, using Handbrake or H.264, H.265 encoding. So it depends on what you're using your PC for but they're both fast. So it's kind of like, which platform do you like more in a way? Now, lastly, kind of, not really, there's always more, RAM. So DDR5 RAM has really progressed and AMD is coming out with the 800 series motherboards. Right now we're on the 600 series and with that, RAM is somewhat limited. There's some specific boards that will do very well with RAM, but the 800 series is gonna have some baseline requirements for you know USB 4.0 and a few other features. So RAM is gonna run very, very nicely on these 800 series motherboards. I got some hands-on with a couple of them actually by MSI when I was in Taipei, Taiwan for Computex. RAM like this, Kingston Renegade, you know, over 8,000 mega transfers RAM, those are ideally just gonna be plug and play for AMD 800 series motherboards. So if you are looking to upgrade to AM5, you might want to wait just a little bit longer until those 800 series motherboards come out. And so there's been a lot to unpack with the AMD Ryzen 9000 launch. Let me know what your thoughts are about all of this and what you think your next upgrade may actually be.